So today I need to make a 1x20. This is for a cased opening for a job we have this week and the opening is around 18 inches. So sticking with lumberyard tradition, I'm calling this board something bigger than it actually is because we're not gonna get all the way to 20 inches. So to my knowledge, there's no board company that makes anything larger than 1x12. So I'm gonna be joining a 1x12 with a 1x8 and taking you guys through that process. I can get 1x16 here locally, but it's MDF and who wants that? I know this client doesn't, I don't wanna work with it. And it's still not big enough, so. We're gonna make it out of Windsor. I'll show you what I got. I've got these three one by 12s on the bottom. I'm gonna be joining those up with these three one by eights here. These other three one by eights are for another jam at the same project, but they're big enough to cover that one. So I'll come in right through here and then right out that back door. And the idea of what I'm trying to do here is obviously those Windsor boards are primed. So if I just take a blade off each one, that'll at least give me something for my glue to join to. I don't want to glue primer to primer for this because it won't last over the life of the joint. So I do have to take off that primed edge. I always say who needs outfeed tables when you got kids? And they make good infeed tables too. I got all these ripped down now. I took a blade off each one of these so they are ready to be edge glued. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm making three of these one by 20s, I don't have that many clamps to keep three of them. I don't have that many clamps to keep one of them together. Uh, but I am gonna use my bar clamps to help align them. But what I'm really gonna be using to hold these together are pocket screws. So I will put pocket screws in the backs of all the one by eights. And some of this, because these boards are so long, you can see I got a little off right there on my cut. I'm just gonna take my low angle block plane and kind of inspect these, make sure I'm not too off uh, because it is kind of hard with the child in feed and out feed tables to really make it perfect. So I got my one by eight set up right here with some clamps on the cut hub and I've got it hanging over a pretty good amount. And then I'm gonna be using this little guy here. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to run it through my big machine. This is a little uh, castle machine you guys have seen me using lately. But yeah, this is face up. So I got the good side up here. So now I can just take my castle machine slide it onto the edge, clamp it down, do my routing, and then my pilot hole gets drilled through that hole right there. So there's a look at our first two pocket holes and that's about how far I'm gonna space them out. I'm not really gonna measure this at all, but I think that's a good distance right there. And I'll continue on. You can see I've got my one by eight here with pockets cut every so often. Pretty good amount in there. I think it's gonna be plenty. I'll go ahead and load all these up with the screws. Makes it a lot easier. All right, time for the glue up. So I'm just gonna apply glue to the non pocket hold piece so my screws don't fall out. Just run a nice bead here. I am just gonna fill this for alignment. So if I'm smooth, then I'm gonna send it. So I'm flush right here. I used to drive my pocket screws with an impact and realized that that was a bad idea. And now I'll just drill them until they're pretty snug. Then I back off. 
I don't want to make that joint weak because remember the glue is going to do most of the holding here in this situation and that is essentially my clamp so now I'm taking my actual clamp off and then we're going to move up and align the next one that one's a hair off but you know what I don't expect to get away with not sanding any of this. It's definitely gonna need a pass with the orbital. I don't wanna bend it on that weak point. Easy, easy. Okay. Here's a look after the initial cleanup. Not too bad, I gotta say. It's not bad, it's gonna require very little minimal orbital work. So that's a good thing. So I basically just feather that joint in and hit it with some primer. Should be like a one by 20. The first, world's first one by 20. Let's actually see what this really is. I'm curious what this came out to be. Looks like we are 18 and 5 16 which 1 by 12 is 11 and a quarter. So technically this is a 1 by 19, but that doesn't sound as cool as a 1 by 20, so we're going to call it a 1 by 20. This side, really smooth. Not much sanding to be done here. But then over here, you can see I got a little off. So my sander was mostly sanding on this side and I did the math on my dimensions I can actually cut this off um, I think it's gonna be a little bit shorter even uh, from what I measured for the job so I'm not even gonna bother with that over there so now I've got to prime this and see how it looks as a full board All right, here's a look after primer. Gigantic one by 20, looking good. Looks pretty sweet. You see our joint right there. The primer's still wet. But this right here is gonna work out just fine. And then once the painters do their magic on it too, it's gonna look even better. Pretty sweet. So one down, two more to go on this job, and this went really well. So my first time edge gluing something that was 16 foot long. Done shorter stuff, obviously, but that's a really unique situation. I have needed a jam that was larger than a one by 12 before. I think it was like 14 inches, but the good thing about that one is it was shorter than 10 feet. Um, I was able to get a piece of plywood, a five by 10 plywood, and then cut it and edge band it. So that worked out really good for that. This one is taller than 10 foot. This is like a 12 foot cased opening. That's why I'm saying I don't really need to sand that other uneven edge over there. Um, and thankfully I don't, because that's a lot of sanding. Thankfully there's minimal work for the painters here. So if you guys were wanting to know if this could be done, it definitely can. You don't need to pocket screw it if you have enough clamps, but I still recommend it because it's like an eternal just clamp in there for the lifetime of the joint. Let's see how heavy it is. It's not too bad.
Nice.